Hey guys, welcome back to Max TV Original. Today we've got a Epson EHTW 3000 on the desk, uh, even though it says uh, 3600, that ex that's actually a cover from a different projector, almost exactly the same one. Uh, in fact, they are exactly the same, just one number difference. So this one I got today, and apparently the person I got it off said that it doesn't work and it may have been struck by lightning. So I'm not sure what's happened. I haven't plugged it in yet. I've connected it, but I haven't turned it on yet. So let's try turning it on and see what happens first. I've got it through current limiting and here we go. And zero. So it is, oh, hang on. The light came on. So I'm going to turn current limiting off and try to strike it. So just current limiting off and let's see what happens. Okay, so it looked, I hear the motors inside for the iris. The lamp isn't striking, however. Fans are not working. And nothing else happens. Okay, let's turn it off. It's consuming 26 watts at the moment. And I keep hearing this little iris. It's got a little iris inside. So anyway, I'm going to turn that off now. Let's open it. I'll show you the projector around first. It is massive. It's got um, XV color, which is usually a Sony thing. It's HDMI, so here's the back of it. We've got two HDMI ports, uh, component, analog, which is CBS, we've got S-Video, uh, VGA, and we've got communication port RS-232 plus the trigger out. So I assume when you press power, the trigger out is usually for something like your curtain or anything. Uh, that's where the filter is, I have removed it, so there is a filter usually. And that's about it. So to remove the lamp, you simply press down here and the top thing just pops out. Once it's out, you uh, can undo those two screws here and simply pull the lamp out. The lamp is good, I know for a fact, because this is a brand new lamp and I've already tested it on another projector. So I have just taken the top off. I haven't done anything else, just took the top off. And what we've got here is the main board. We look, uh, we've got what looks like our starter, the driver for the, um, the bulb. A lot of fans. The engine itself, the optical engine, is located underneath the board. So I'm going to disconnect everything from the board first. Uh, and we're going to remove this top board and have a look uh, what's underneath if there's any problems. I have unplugged and unscrewed the board. If you ever do work with the LCD projectors, make sure you take care unplugging those first. So the LCD is unplugged first because sometimes you get um, you know, distracted and you unplug everything around the board and you start pulling the board and you damage the LCDs because you forgot to unplug those. Same with plugging in actually, there's a few times that I've uh, plugged everything in and uh, turned the projector on and it's just white screen and I'm going what's going on and because I forgot to plug the LCDs in. So that's the main board. There is no obvious signs of damage to it uh, on both sides. So that's the main CPU. It looks quite fine. So that's the system underneath it. As you can see there are two stepper motors here and here. Those stepper motors, they are actually, uh, there's a little slider here. I'll open the engine up and I'll show you. Uh, this motor regulates the, stepper motor regulates the iris itself. And this one here, well, it's actually a sensor here, I believe, but there is another motor here. Uh, that actually slides, there's a slide for XV color. So it's just a filter that gets slid in, in between the lamp and the, uh, the engine itself. So I thought I'll show you the engine itself. As you can see, that's where the bulb usually sits. That's the light entry. So light goes through this prism or lens. It's like multiple lenses. Uh, they scatter the light. And the next step, it goes through a um, iris. So I don't know if I can show you iris. You'll probably be able to see inside 
there are two gates and if I press that oh you see that moving so it's like a curtain that opens and closes it is really hard to see but it's right there it just opens and closes and that stepper motor here is what's driving it that big one here there so after that the light goes onto the Sony um, XV color filter which is that filter here so if I connect power to it to the motor you'll see that the filter will slide as you saw it just slid and then it filters for the XV color let's try going backwards so that's just little curtain that moves in and out and those two wires is just a switch to tell the um, computer which position it's in after that it goes through a lens and uh, that's it then it gets uh, through the uh, filters and spl splits three ways for red green and blue and enters from three ways onto the um, uh, LCDs themselves so they're literally black and white LCDs and after that it combines in that prism there and shoots out of the lens I've got the power supply out uh, it seems to be okay I'm not seeing any damage on there uh, I've just bust through all the MOSFETs and everything and they seem to be fine as well all the fuses there's quite a few there's a main fuse right here as you can see and then there is another fuse um, hiding just here and two more on the outputs and they all seem to be okay so another thing I'm going to check out is the lamp uh, driver uh, so I'm going to assemble this back and uh, try. I will try to uh, fool it so what I'm going to try to do is put the that back in the projector without the driver and then I'm going to short a couple of pins out to simulate that the lamp is there and it's uh, ignited. Okay, so I have just uh, checked the board. I uh, did not connect any of the LCDs. And I have removed the lamp mechanism. So I have just checked and there is power to strike the lamp. So that's actually the, the igniter itself. What it is the block it has it's a separate circuit from anything else so all it has is about 340 volts DC which is supplied through that cable there and the second the other two prongs go to the lamp and the other cable with five pins which is this one goes to the main board and those five pins are usually go straight to three optocouplers so two optocouplers are common with one contact and then it goes to um, one of them is this lamp, stri lamp striking the other one is lamp brightness the third optocoupler is a return one, so that signals to the projector that the lamp, ha lamp has ignited. So what I've done is I've manually shorted the ignition. I've checked the voltage on, the, uh, on those two optocouplers and the voltage is supplied to the ballast. And I've shorted those two and the projector kind of started, but then it freaked out because it couldn't detect the right signal. So we know now that the power supply is not damaged and there is no problem. So I'll try to turn it off now. And let's try starting it again. So, what I'll do is, I'll push the power on. And I'll count till about 10, so the power is now on. So I'll let it check its little things. I'll just quickly measure the voltage. 3.3 so now it's commanding lamp to start and I'm going to short those contacts and there we go all the fans are started but and the projector is running so of course because I'm not doing the right signal it now goes to the wrong lamp temperature so now we know that the power supply is fine and I've tested all the voltages. Uh, let me just turn it off. So I'm going to have a look at the ballast and test all the parts on there, test the op optocouplers and I'll be right back. I'm going to try to ignite the lamp now. I have uh, done a little circuit. It's connected at the moment through current limiting. It is going, it's all live right now, so that's going to the bridge rectifier and the capacitor. 
do not replicate this circuit because after it's rectified at the capacitor there's around 340 volts you do not want to mess with this sort of voltage and after if that ignites the lamp there's going to be thousands of volts you do not want to mess with that this is only the input so that goes uh, there's no voltage voltage free that's only connected to optocouplers so i'm going to try to um simulate the signal to strike the lamp and see if the lamp will ignite i just want to see if uh, the ballast is working okay the lamp has ignited as you can see so that works so i can assemble this now and put it back in a projector and we'll try um, igniting the lamp again and see what happens i have assembled everything and put a bulb in so I'm going to apply the power to it and I'm going to get rid of the current limiting. So let's try ignite it and uh, well start it and see what happens if it's going to ignite the bulb. Alright so it's doing its checks. So it tried to ignite the lamp as you saw and then uh, straight away went off into this mode where the two red lights are flashing. So the two red lights flashing meaning that we have a problem with either our um, cinema slider or the iris. So in my case it's iris. The way I know it is when you turn the projector on what happens first is the cinema filter slides in and out so it's a self check and that's it. Then the iris starts moving and then it kind of starts Kind of getting stuck in one spot and when i move it the wheel here it feels a bit stiff on that spot just hang on where is it just there so that's exactly where it's getting stuck so the projector keeps trying it for a while and then it does the test of everything else uh, including fans and sensors and then it briefly turns the light on and off just to check it to see if there's any other faults and then it gives me the error so we know the problem is the shutter so i'm gonna open it up and probably lubricate it and see if maybe any tooth is broken and uh, once that's done we're going to try powering it on again and see if it works so here is our shutter i've added some um, lithium grease as you can see the white stuff and it's now moving really smoothly with no problems let's assemble it together and see if it'll work this time so I've uh, put it back together. I didn't put the board in just yet because we're just going to test it first and see what happens. Okay, it's started. So let's see. If the image is okay. Okay, so the image is okay, but you can see the green glow around the lettuce, which is an indicator of a bad polarizer. So now we're going to open uh, the engine up and have a look what's the problem with the polarizer. As we saw the green tint, that means one of the polarizers on the prism assembly is dead or burnt out. So we, what we need to do, not those polar, you can check those polarizers, there's three of them. You can remove those three screws here, which will remove that whole cover of the engine and the polarizers will come with it and you can check them optically if they are right. But the polarizers that usually burn out on the green is we need to remove the actual yoke itself. So for that, we're going to remove one screw. I'll hold this down with my fingers and on the other side here there's just one screw here that holds it in place so I'm gonna undo it and the whole yoke will come out make sure you're holding it with your fingers because it will fall out if you don't and you don't want to damage the alignment so here is the actual yoke itself as you see there's three LCDs and they look pretty good and there is a polarizing filter 
inside I will have to zoom in let me get the, the desk lid and I'll zoom it in and I'll show you what I mean this is the yoke from an older projector not an older one but the one that I've got for spare parts and uh, usually I wouldn't recommend removing the LCD panels because they are aligned for the prism so there's three of them and that's the output image and if you misalign if you unscrew them and you move them slightly you're gonna have convergence problems so that means you will have green slightly out and it'll be like two pictures overlapping so you don't really want to touch them there is a way to remove the uh, polarizer I believe the green one's already removed so the one that I've removed from the from the one that we saw on the screen is this polarizer here and to your eye it seems good but if I try to angle it on the light you can see it's almost like it's got a copper coil around it inside the glass but that's and you can see the center of it is burned out as well that's what's giving us that green tint you can see it clearly burned out but if you look right through it it looks all right so yeah that's that's the problem and that polarizer sits right there so to get to it you need to remove those two little sticky things which you will reattach later and actually just for example here you can already see the polarizer there see those two drops of glue that's the actual polarizer so removing these uh, panels will not get you to that polarizer you will need to carefully grab maybe a Stanley knife and to remove it you will need to carefully just cut that glue without damaging the polarizer on this side and then do the same on that side again that's just a sticky thing that can be removed and as you can see here there's drops of glue here too there we go and I'm going to carefully remove that from there and that's the polarizer this one looks like it's pretty bad as well let me show you you can see that it's um bit melted around the edges this is the original that is dodgy and this is the the new one that we just removed uh, they're literally identical polarizers so they're not polarizing the color they're polarizing the light so i'm going to be using this one to reinstall in the projector uh, and see if that will fix the issue okay so i have replaced the polarizer and as you can see the picture is nice and clean so there's a bit of a glare but that's just because the actual camera above my desk is facing the bulb itself but if i put the this in there you can see the image is absolutely crystal clear there is no problems at all all colors are there very sharp so yeah just one polarizer fixed everything I'm going to put it back together and that project projector is done. I've got another projector coming up, uh, which is uh, just trips the circuit breaker when you plug it in and blows the fuse. I will also do a separate video on the polarizers and how projectors work. Once you understand the optical engine, which is a very simple thing, once you know exactly what's happening inside, you will be able to identify what's happening with your projector. Because uh, if you open the engine now and have a look at it, you'll be like, whoa, there's so many you know, pieces of glass and polarizers just for one color. What do I do? Which one's a faulty one? Uh, or you know, what to adjust? but it's actually a lot more simpler than you think. So this is it for this video. Thanks for watching. I hope you enjoyed it. My name is Max. Bye.